Well, thank you very much for being here. I, I just have two comments I want to make before we get to uh, to, to uh, Chris. First of all, this is my this has been my forty third year in baseball. It's the worst year I've ever suffered through. It's been a horrible experience. I, I, I feel awful. I know how our fans feel, and we, you know, this is gonna, we're gonna put this behind us, and we're gonna go forward and get better. But this has really been a nightmare. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about is I, I spoke to uh, Superintendent uh, uh, Waller from the police department last night, and uh, he authorized me to tell everybody that, regardless of what has been said in the past by anybody. The police have not ruled out the possibility or the probability that the gunshots the other night came from outside the ballpark. I, I, I don't want to comment on the specific details because the police is, are still investigating. They haven't come to a final conclusion. But we have done a lot of investigation. We have gathered a lot of facts. And without going into the detail because I don't want to influence the police decision, but the fact is based upon the information available to us, I see virtually no possibility that the gunshots came from within the ballpark. It's totally safe to be in this ballpark. I don't think a gun has ever been, uh, has gotten past uh, our security. And I think ultimately that, that, that will come out and I'm hopeful that the police department will complete their investigation as soon as possible. Now turning our attention to the, the main order of business today, Chris Getz. I first became familiar with Chris uh, when he became the farm director for the White Sox. And over the, over the years, over the early years, I, I became tremendously impressed with the job that he had done, or was doing as, as the, uh, the farm director. For the first time in, in, in all the years that I've been associated with the White Sox, I had a farm director who was doing what I wanted. Uh, somebody who was teaching baseball. We want to develop players who know how to play the game and what I observed and I told many, many people over the years was that Chris was doing a great job. Now, when unfortunately, I had to come to the conclusion that we needed a change at the top. The first thing that I did was develop a list of qualified people around the game who I thought could come in and, and take over and, and, and be fine general managers for the White Sox. Chris was on that list. There were quite a number of other people who were on that list. But the conclusion I came to is that what we owe our fans and ourselves is not to waste any time. We want, we want to get better as fast as we possibly can. And if I had gone outside, it would have taken anybody at least a year to evaluate the organization and to, to get familiar with all the people that, that were in it. And that would mean that this year would not be a year of great progress. I, I had in Chris, who I spent hours talking to, somebody who is intimately familiar with the organization, who knows who the good people are and who the medium people are and who the bad people are. So he's going to be able to step in and, and, and start running right away. We have, we have a core in this team that can get better in a hurry. We can improve in a hurry. And Chris, Chris can start to, to do the things he wants to do right away. If I brought somebody in from the outside, as I just to repeat, it would have taken a year. I could have brought Brand Tricky back, and it would have taken him a year to evaluate the organization. So even though I had a list of outside people who I felt could do the job, I also had a, had a list of one uh, among the inside people who I felt could do the job as well as anybody I was going to interview. I didn't have to interview these people because I knew them all, so I, and I knew that they were qualified. But, I, but what I did know was I had somebody inside who could start right away making things happen, and that's, that's the, the, the reason why Chris was selected. So now Chris will come up and he'll, he'll have some introductory comments and you can ask him questions and I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna listen to, the, uh, uh, to, to Chris. This day is about Chris. I'm not gonna take any, any questions. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to welcome the new Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Chicago White Sox, Chris Getz. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I want to begin thanking Jerry Reinsdorf for this tremendous opportunity to be the next general manager of the Chicago White Sox. This is a storied franchise, rich in tradition. It's an honor to play for this team, an honor to be an executive of this organization as it enters into a new chapter. I would like to thank my wife, Nikki, for her unwavering support throughout my baseball journey and my parents for the sacrifices they made to put me into this position today. They taught me the value of family, which I work to impart onto my three children, Luke, Alex, and Avery, who bring me so much joy and balance in my life. This is an opportunity that I do not take lightly, and there's a lot of work to do. I am not naive to the expectation that things need to change. To that I will say, the fans deserve different, I am different, we will be different. From this day forward, our organization will do whatever is necessary to be better in 2024 and beyond. It starts with a strong foundation. We will assess international, amateur, and pro scouting. We will look at player development, sports science, and medical departments, all while continuing to integrate analytics into every process that we have. With my understanding of the ins and outs of this organization, I plan to empower the talent that already exists, quickly fill the gaps with outside hires, and bring innovation, creativity, and energy in our pursuit of excellence. Regarding our 40-man roster, the approach is that no one is untouchable. If we have an opportunity to multiply or upgrade our major league, from our major league team from our roster or system, we will exhaust it. We will be looking to create more depth and balance to our roster for the near term and long. In the coming weeks, I plan to sit down with Pedro to assess our Major League staff and meet with players to listen to their own ideas of where to improve the clubhouse. This feedback and all feedback is critical in developing a necessary long-term plan. So once again, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. I am excited about the change that has already begun and will continue. I am eager to more thoroughly assess our departments and foundation, and I am ready to officially begin this next chapter. All right, now we will um, open it up for questions for Chris. I will uh, I'll call on you, and we'll have the microphone come over to you, I believe, and get your question. Uh, we'll start with Vinny. Chris, you uh, you said in your statement there that you are different. Um, obviously, fans can look at your resume and know where you've been the last few years. How would you say you are different from the, the folks who just uh, preceded you in this position? I mean, just, just like any leader uh, of an organization, you're, you're shaped by your experiences. And, you know, I'm a recent player, um, was an executive in – uh, another organization, and obviously I've got my experiences here. You learn through those experiences, and that's going to uh, shape me as shape me in the leadership style I'm going to have. Um, but I realize that uh, there is skepticism. I do. I am an internal hire, and I've got to, you know, bear that burden. And it's my job to go out there and prove otherwise. Uh, right next to Vinny Merck. Scott Merkin. Hey, uh, Chris, you talked a little about the season, but in your estimation, you've been around the team for a while. What has gone wrong? I mean, maybe it's too broad a question, but what has been the overriding theme for you and why this team is where it's at in 2023? You know, obviously it's been disappointing. Um, and, you know, you got you, you to look deep into the organization and the foundation. And I spoke of the foundational pillars that we have, and it's my job to make sure we're sound in all those areas. And the major league team is a byproduct of, you know, the depths of the organization. So um, I'm going to pursue excellence in all of those areas. And, and hopefully that helps clean up our team. Um, you know, we've had a lot of injuries. We've had players that have underperformed. Um, and I look forward to sitting down with both Pedro and learn more about, you know, their, the coaching staff and certainly their styles and, and, and gain that feedback from the players. Uh, Bruce, right behind you, Jeff. Chris, congratulations. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, 
there's a perception out there that, uh, you know, the White Sox have stayed within their organization too much over the years. Obviously, you're an exception, and so is Pedro stepping out and uh, bringing in other people. But what will your uh, thoughts be about bringing in uh, new blood and different people from other organizations to help you in your quest to uh, win? You know, for one, I, I'm going to take advantage of, of being someone that's been here um, and has a strong understanding of the White Sox organization. And, you know, with that being said, it's going to be important to bring in different perspectives, different ideas, um, which comes with different people to, to add to the group that we have here and make us uh, better decision makers so we can go out there and put together a better ball club moving forward. Uh, over there, John. Hey, Chris. Uh, given your role with the minor leagues and the kind of underperformance we've seen, why do you think you got this job? What makes you qualified to have this job running the entire organization? You know, I've been very proud with some of the, the players that have come up here and helped us win, going back to, to – us winning a division a couple of years ago. Um, I have been managing the farm. Um, I think we've got a lot of good people. We've got a lot of quality players. And once again, I feel like my experience of knowing what's going on in this organization, I'll be able to go out there and fill the gaps quickly to get us back on track. Let's see a hand up, uh, Sully. Do you expect major changes, minor changes? Do you think that this team can't compete next year with just a few changes, or how do you look at that? You know, certainly, I, I think I can address the elephant in the room that we are we do play in the AL Central. So, you know, every year, you know, it seems that the the division is up for grabs. With that being said, you know, we sit at 53 wins right now, so there is a gap to fill, um, and we're going to look at different ways to improve this club. We're going to be creative with it. Um, we're not going to lose sight of our long-term goal of winning a World Series. But in the near term, once again, I look, look forward to sitting down with Pedro and learning what we have to do, building, going towards the, the offseason and getting ready for next year. We have a question in the middle here. I can't see who that is. Chris, first of all, congratulations. I saw you when you broke in. I was here when you broke in as a rookie. <laughs> Given the team expectation over the last couple of years and falling short, and it appears that the window is closing on this opportunity, do you see the the only way to move forward is to go the free agent route and it's the funds there to go to free agent because it appears that the minor league system is not ready to lift this team up? We're going to look at – you know, every opportunity to improve this ball club. We've got some quality players on this club. Now, if that means that we need to look at ways to, to improve the depth in certain areas, we're going to do that. Um, fortunately, at the deadline, we were able to acquire some players to boost our farm system. Some of those players are at the upper level of the minor leagues. And then we need to go out and, and look where we need to supplement. Jerry's been very supportive through the years um, from the baseball operations baseball office um, when we come to him and, and say that we need to do this or that he's been very supportive um, but we're going to look at all of that stuff in the coming weeks and months there's another question over there i'm blocked by cameras and cheryl as well uh, after Chris right here. Sorry, behind the cameras. Uh, I know this is obviously day one for you. Jerry addressed it off the top, uh, but in, as it relates to Friday's shooting incident, you got fans coming back tomorrow for a game. For those fans who may be concerned to come to the ballpark or have questions on how this was handled in terms of the information that has been released both from the White Sox and the Chicago Police Department, what do you say to those fans? You know, our, our security group and uh, the Chicago Police Department are communicating um, you know, the, there are still some questions that need to be answered, but I, I, I do want to say that our, our highest priority is the safety of our fans, our players, and their families. Cheryl? Chris, congratulations first. Um, the fans, they're not happy right now. 
How do you address them when they, they want to ask, how long is this going to take? When can this happen? You know, our commitment is to our fans, and we realize that they're not happy. Um, so I'm going to do a deep dive into the organization, rely on the group that we have here, and bring in different ideas and, and thinking to, to boost the intellectual firepower that we have. Um, you know, like I said earlier, we're fortunate to play in the AL Central, and we've got to find ways to build depth and balance to this roster to make us better for next year and beyond. Uh, Chris, you talked about learning from your experiences. Looking back at the situations with Omar Vizquel and Wes Helms, is there anything you wish you would have done differently in those situations, and what have you learned from that experience? You know, those are personnel matters that um, certainly don't want to go too far in depth. Uh, and I will say that I was very proud with our organization and how it was handled. We, we have extent, extensive training, uh, both players and staff, um, to prevent issues from popping up from time to time. And when they do, they know how to act accordingly. And in those cases, they did. Uh, right in the middle over here. Uh, following up on my colleague's question about last Friday, um, the way the police handled this by not stopping the game, even though they had people shot inside and they didn't know what was going on. Uh, we understand the team was not informed. Uh, do you believe the police handled this properly? And, and should they have stopped the game for the safety of everybody inside on Friday night? You know, it was clearly not a, an immediate threat to anyone. Um, obviously, the, there was time that needed to to, to collect information and, and our security group and the CPD worked closely together uh, and operated the way that they did. And the questions are, the, the questions are still gonna be answered. Uh, Ryan McGuffey. Uh, congrats, Chris. Um, you just mentioned that there's nobody that's untouchable. We've heard a lot about the core over the last few years judging from you having this role now is there a core now going forward that you, that you see i mean if no one's untouchable there we know about the contract situations with some of the guys what do you do you even use the word core right now there's certainly players that we have on this roster that we feel like can help us compete in the future i think it would be short-sighted uh, to think that we don't need to add to the group somehow some way so we need to look at our roster and if that means that we need to talk to other clubs or fill gaps in, uh, in, uh, in other ways. We're going to do that. Daryl? Daryl's right there. Yeah, if you. Hey Chris, uh, do you anticipate uh, bringing in somebody, um, you know, Dayton's name has been mentioned, but somebody along those lines as a um, sort of an assistant or to fill that type of role alongside you? I'm certainly open to, to bringing in people that I feel like can be positive resources to our group. Um, I know some names have been thrown out there, um, and we haven't had those discussions yet, but certainly open-minded in terms of strengthening our group. Lamont. Hey, Chris. Yeah, what, what are just some of those first steps that you want to take to, to start turning this thing uh, back around again? It really starts with sitting down with Pedro and and I look forward to sitting down with the players as well. I think that type of feedback is going to be strong. I hope that they're comfortable speaking to me, being, being that I'm a former player, and I can relate to some of the struggles they're going through. Um, yeah, so first and foremost, I want to sit down with, with that group and, and certainly you know, find ways within the organization to, to improve our processes as a whole. All the way up in the corner there. Yeah, hey, hey, Chris, um, just to be clear, um, are you saying that Pedro will be back next year? Pedro will be back next year. Yeah. I think it's important to provide stability to our players. There's been a lot of changes the last couple of years, um, and certainly here recently. And I believe that we need to get back to playing baseball, focusing on baseball, so when these players show up each day, they can just focus on the game and not the leaders in the organization. Uh, Jesse, I think that's Jesse. Hey, Chris. Um, just circling back to your old job, um, you worked under Kenny and Rick for a long time. Do you feel like you have some distinct philosophical differences, or or a different vision, or team building than than maybe 
what went on here before? You know, every, every individual operates differently. I have a tremendous amount of respect for those two. Um, you know, now that we're going to have a single decision-making operation, um, I think that with the added influence of outsiders, along with the group that we have here, you know, our processes are going to be a little bit different, um, and we're going to see that on the field. Uh, Vinny? Chris, you obviously were just asked about Pedro numerous times, but what, from your vantage point, have you thought of the job that he and his coaching staff have done this season? You know, Pedro's had to wear a lot of hats this year, and I certainly uh, look forward to providing the support that he needs. Obviously, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, um, and that that means learning more about what our coaches are providing our players, and I'll gain that in the coming weeks. Bruce? Different conversation. Uh, Mr. Reinsdorf talked about that uh, the players that you were developing in the minor leagues weren't necessarily the ones that you signed because you're not director of scouting. Do you expect the changes in, uh, in scouting, and uh, how do you look to beef that up so you have better players to develop? Yeah, I look forward to, to meeting with our baseball operations department. You know, recently here, we've acquired some really quality players, both in the draft and international. That doesn't mean that there aren't improvements that need to be made, but I've been, I've been happy with the recent uh, acquisitions of the players that we have. Ryan. Chris, obviously, um, we've heard a lot about leadership this year in one way or the other. Uh, with your experience as a player, you've been in, in, in good leadership clubhouses and bad leadership clubhouses. How, how do you use your experience as a player to identify what a clubhouse might need? Because it's not always the 30, 100 guy that's the best leader. You know, I'm a believer that leadership starts at the top. You know, and Jerry made changes here recently. Um, and, you know, he's appointed me as the general manager. So it does start with me. Um, going back to my playing days, in, you know, I'm thinking of positive cultures I've been around, negative cultures. You know, I think everyone knows what a good culture feels like and a bad culture feels like. The culture certainly, you know what it feels like in the clubhouse because it lives there. It lives in the cages. It lives on the field during stretch, in the training room, on bus rides, planes, hotels. And it's my job to find the ingredients to improve the culture that we have. And when it comes to leadership and individual players, it starts with themselves. They need to understand what it takes to get the job done that night and be committed to that. You take care of your own business and good things will happen. Mark. Chris, uh, now that you're moving up to this role, what will happen with the uh, player development or the you know vice president in charge of player development that sort of situation. I still, I, I feel like we're we're in a pretty good spot from a leadership standpoint. But with that being said, you know this is day one in this job, and we're going to look at uh, ways to improve the player development operation as well. One or two more questions, John. Chris, you said Pedro had to wear a lot of hats this year. What do you mean by that? Like, what does what does that entail? Well, he's a first-year manager with our club, and certainly that means getting to know his players, um, getting his coaches comfortable here, um, and learning our front office, the operation throughout. And through that, you know, you certainly have to have conversations and experiences that you won't have in year two. And first and foremost, I think having me now in this position and having a consistent conversations you know, throughout, throughout the days and, this, and, and as the season progresses, I'm going to be able to help him navigate a major league season. One last question, Daryl. Do uh, you expect uh, Tim Anderson to be part of the uh, picture next year and his contract is, uh, needs to be picked up? Is, uh, do you view Tim as, as being your guy there at shortstop next year? You know, T.A. is a very talented player that, you know, we, we drafted out of junior college. We've seen the best years out of TA, and we've also seen some struggles. And we're no, we know what he's capable of doing on the field, and he's an important piece of the organization. Now, a decision like that, 
takes time. And now that this is day one, I certainly want to sit down with TA, sit down with Pedro, and really exhaust that decision because he deserves that. Thank you all for being here. Congratulations, Chris Getz, our new Senior Vice President and General Manager here with the White Sox. You know how it is to tell, right? It doesn't have to say a whole lot. Give you what you need. 